Yo, I'm Matthew Kingpin. As always, let's not waste any time, let's get right into the video. CS, especially for a new player, is an extremely hostile and unintuitive experience by design. I wanted to boil down some of the most basic concepts of how to play the defending side with this video to give a digestible chunk of direction to anyone just starting out or even all the way up to an intermediate level of play to help guide them into learning the fundamentals of CT side. Before I get into it, I should disclaimer that I am not a pro level player and I'm not even solidly a face at 10 or pub star level player. I'm above average and that's all I am. If anything, that gives my advice even more credibility though. If these pointers can work for me, they can work for you. Alright ladies, gents, and those somewhere else, let's get into it. To begin, I should explain the overlying goal of CT side. The objective of counter-terrorists is to stop terrorism, aka the thing the United States government claims to be doing every day. As a pure-blooded champion of justice, at least until you switch sides, how do you most effectively grease the wheels of that sweet, sweet counter-terrorism? Firstly, you need to understand when to buy, what to buy, why you should be buying it, and how to set yourself up for the most possible interventionist policy you can commit. When and what do you buy on the CT side? It's all about the economy, babe. This is something you'll naturally get better at feeling out over time, but generally you only want to buy fully when yourself and most of your team can afford armor, either full or just Kevlar, one of the main CT rifles, either the M4A4, M4A1S, AUG, or if you are truly the bravest of patriots, the <coughs> FAMAS, and at least one nade. Doesn't matter how you use it, but just having the option to help yourself out with utility is important on CT side. Unfortunately though, CT side is a world of compromises. Like the compromise to have to force five rounds in a row because your teammates can't do basic math. So what do you buy when you can't afford one of the main rifles? There are plenty of options, however, most of them are situational. That is, of course, excluding the Dark Souls endgame level boss of Counter-Strike CT side, the MP9. Generally, if your team is buying and you would like to buy with them but can't afford Snicky Beaky, the MP9 is absolutely killer at doing just about everything except longer range fights. Learn how to use it effectively and you'll win a lot of extra rounds because of it. Now, why would you want to buy the guns and equipment I mentioned? What makes them better than, say, a PP Bison? Other than everything. The actual math and statistics of the firearms are more complicated than I'm going to be delving into here, but the gist is that those guns I listed in the game's current meta give the highest chance for you to win gunfights against enemy players in comparison to their alternatives in most situations. The reason you have to buy armor on 99% of buy round scenarios is a concept called aim punch, which, in brief, is a mechanic where your aim gets intentionally made inaccurate every time you get shot by a weapon while you're not wearing armor. Just imagine your cat is tugging on your mouse cable every time you take an enemy's bullet, and that'll give you an idea of why you should be buying armor on buy rounds. There will be instances where guns like the MAG-7, SSG-08, or the XM-1014 could provide more value, but in general, the weapons I mentioned are the centerpiece of CT side defense. The vanilla bean ice cream of counterterrorism, if you will. The M4s and the AUG will allow you to duel players at any range with a reasonable chance of winning should you hit your shots and play your position effectively. If you want to get better at the former, practice your aim. If you want to get better at the latter, that's what the next section is for, boss. Now that you've got yourself a nice M4, armor to protect yourself from aim punch, and a grenade or four, what do I do now is something you may be asking. First of all, remember that your objective is defense, primarily. Unless the enemy team has decided to give up their lives of crime to play strip poker and T-spawn, you should be staying near the bomb sites and waiting for T's to aggro onto you, not the other way around. Second of all, you should remember that the enemy team has functioning brains, even if only just barely sometimes, and will remember how you played previous rounds. In other words, don't be predictable. Play a variety of positions and mix up your utility usage from time to time to avoid having enemies hard counter you. Think about how your play looks to the enemy team. If you'd call yourself a capital M moron if you saw your own gameplay, the enemy team is going to catch on to that too and exploit your weaknesses. Third. Tying into the last point about T-side players having functional brains, try to play positions that give you a higher chance of winning gunfights and your enemies a lower chance of winning gunfights. 
don't play spots where enemies are likely to just hard clear you and or pre-aim you unless you've got a good reason to do so. Fourth, in an ideal scenario, your teammates will also be playing defense with you. Try to work with them as much as you can. Two players working together is more than just straight doubling the effectiveness of a hold, it increases your chance of holding off T aggression exponentially. In that same vein, if your teammate gets blasted, keep in mind which parts of the map aren't being watched now that your friend has gone up to that big ATF meetup in the sky. As I said earlier, CT side is about compromise, and you'll be making a lot of compromises if your teammates keep trying to stop T side AK pushes with their cerebral cortices. The opposite is also true. Don't be the guy who tries to win the game all on their own and turns every round into a 4v5 15 seconds in. That's about all I have to say for this video. It's nothing too in-depth or niche because I want to outline how CT side should be framed for you as a player, not tell you specifically what you should or shouldn't do or where you should or shouldn't play. This is more the fundamentals, the skeletal structure of CT side. Once you have the general feel for the game down, you'll be able to more easily graft new positions, plays, and weapon choices into your toolkit as a player, but if you're just starting out, knowing the whys is more important than the exact whats. If a new player engages with the material, they are more likely to commit it to memory, and that's the idea behind this production. Thank you all for watching. As always, please give me any and all feedback on this video and any other I've made. It is all read and appreciated deeply. That's all.